Hello, and welcome back to Let's Talk Chicago Bears, even though most people don't really want to anymore. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. It's Friday, and uh, the weekend's upon us, and Christmas Eve is a week from today. What? I know. So um, I hope you all have a great holiday, And um, but let's get to it. Um, first of all, if you watched my show on Monday, you knew I was very frustrated and pissed off. And I forgot to mention two really important things about the game on Sunday night that were pivotal um, to how Nagy really sucks as a coach. Um, so I'm going to mention them now, and then we're going to talk about the Vikings. I totally forgot to mention when we were in the fourth quarter of the uh, last Sunday night Green Bay game, and the Bears were down by 11 points. It was fourth down in inches, and Nagy punts the frickin' ball. What the hell? I, I was so mad that day that I forgot to put this in the show. I mean, that alone should get him fired, and I do know that management was not pleased with that. And I, I, I was thinking to myself, is he trying to get himself fired now so that he doesn't, because he knows he's going to get fired. So maybe he did that to see if they'd fire him after the game. So that he doesn't have to deal with the press the next four games. And he, you know, he's going to get paid the rest of the year anyway. So, um, I don't know. That was a stupid-ass play. And then he said, oh, yeah, I made a mistake the next day. What? And then the other big thing that stood out for me, and it just been it just goes with what I've been saying all year, that Allen Robinson did not show up to play. Even though the Bears franchised him, and I don't know, I, I want to say he got, like, we couldn't, you know, I didn't look it up, but I know it was like $20 million, $20, 24000000 million this season. And he certainly didn't earn it by any means of, the, of imagination. Because if you recall, and I don't know if it was the third or fourth quarter, uh, Fields was running down the field with the ball, and um, Robinson had a chance to block somebody, which would have opened up more running for Fields. And, and, and some people think he could have scored a touchdown. I don't know, but Robinson just kind of stood there and didn't do anything. And to me, after that, I'd sit him the rest of the season. Screw it. I know you're paying him, but you know what? That sends a message to all the other teams because he's got a, he's a free agent next year, and he wants a big contract. Well, if other teams see that he did that, I don't think they're going to be impressed. I don't think he's going to get the money that he really, really thinks he's going to deserves because he didn't show up this year. And I really hope other teams see that because he does not deserve a big payday. Because I don't care if your team's winning or losing, you're earning a paycheck every damn week. So play like it. You should be playing 110 percent. And I don't think uh, Robinson's played 70 percent this year max. So. I wouldn't play him, but that's me. All right, enough bitching about that experience. Now we're going to talk about our next downfall. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the Bears are 4-9. and nine. We all know how bad that is. And the Vikings are 6-7, and seven, and they're trying to get a wild card spot. So w we know that they're coming to play, right? That's for sure. And um, you know what? I don't know where this game is. So I'm going to look it up on my phone. You're pro I think it might be in Minnesota. Um, so anyways, they're, they're vying for a buy. You know, they're buying to get in. So they're coming to play. And you know what? After reading all their stats, they're good. They are really, really good. Uh, no, actually, I take that back. This game is in Soldier Field on Monday night. Another national TV embarrassment because we're going to get into it, but the Bears aren't going to win this game, especially with everybody on injured reserve, okay? So the, these two teams have played 120 times. The Vikings, of course, like everybody else, lead it 61 to 57 to two ties. So they have 61 wins, Bears have 57, and uh, and there's two ties. And they had one postseason um, in 19, 50, 1995. They played, um, and the Bears won that. So so let's talk about their, their top players like I always do. Um, Cousins, Kirk Cousins. 
I was always a fan of Kirk Cousins when he played at Michigan State. I'm a big ha- a college football uh, watcher as well, especially the Big Ten. I love him. I'm from the Midwest, obviously. So, um, but I don't know if he's turned out to be all that. I didn't think he was going to be fantastic, but he's got a lot of potential. It's just unfortunate that he hasn't uh, – Gone to the playoffs more. But anyways, Kirk Cousins is their quarterback. He has 3,569 yards. Yeah, you heard that. With 27 touchdowns and only five interceptions. Damn good. Sacked 18 times. Our secondary better be ready. And with people being out, uh, it's going to be embarrassing, I have a feeling. Because our secondary already sucks. And then they have... um, to have a quarterback like that, he's licking his chops, just like um, Rodgers did last week. So I, I don't even know what's going to happen. So he's good, real good. Okay, their running back is Delvin Cook, who is also really good. He has played 10 games. He hasn't played all 13, and he has 978 yards. So that tells you right there he is good with six touchdowns, although he has fumbled the ball three times so maybe that's something the bears need to work on but he is good as well and for having 978 yards and missing three games pretty damn good their top wide receiver is justin jefferson really good too he has 1288 yards receiving with eight touchdowns we don't even come close to that of course we're dead last in 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 offense so it doesn't matter but these guys are good their defense they have more sacks they have 41 sacks they have an 11 interceptions 11 forced fumbles and when i read the forced fumbles i thought fields better watch out because we all know he loves to fumble that ball so they are good they they rank they ranked out of 32 teams seventh in passing yards 10th in tw- uh, in rushing that's the only thing we beat them in. Points scored the, their 11th out of 32 teams, and points allowed their 25th. We beat them in that. So we beat them in two categories, but not by much. So this just tells you they're good, very good. Okay, Fields, he's played 11 games. He only has 1,585 yards. Six TDs and 10 touchdowns. Now, that's getting a little better, the ratio, but it's still not good. It's just not. You've got to have more touchdowns and and interceptions, period. Um, He's been sacked 33 times, I know. Um, So Fields is going to have his hands full this week. There's no doubt about it because clearly Minnesota can play. And remember, they're playing for a playoff spot. Our top running back, um, David Montgomery, he has met, he's only played nine games and he has 608 yards. Imagine if he played all 30, uh, excuse me, 13 games. He'd be over 1,000 yards easy. And I, I just don't see him. He might get them, but I doubt it, which would really suck for him. He has six touchdowns. But if the Bears would have run the ball, the problem is the Bears, when they finally started running the ball, when he was still playing and then he was out, but then when he came back, they run the first half, and he was doing great. And then they were always behind, so they had no. You know, they would run a little bit, but then they had to throw because they were always behind. And that's on Nagy. Um, um, our top wide receiver, Mr. Mooney, my favorite, number eleven. He has seven hundred and forty yards, and he should be over a thousand two at this point because he's good. But we're just so bad on offense because of the play calling, you know. And he has just three touchdowns. But I love this guy, and I told you by the end of this year he's going to be our number one receiver, and he is. So he's going to be the number one receiver his third year next year, and then we but we have to fill in, give him. We got to get a number two receiver to complement him. And that's somebody who's got to play, unlike Robinson. Um, our next um, closest uh, wide receiver slash or tight end is our tight end, Clement, our second-year guy. He has 419 yards. That should also be higher. But he has been having to do blocking duty on our offensive line because our offensive line has been so bad. So let's hope next year that he can actually be a tight end. Hmm. 
You know, I mean, he'll have to block some, but the, we want him out there catching. The Bears drafted him to catch the frickin' ball, okay, and score touchdowns. So, just saying. And then, you know, I think Robinson was the next closest with 360 yards. That's embarrassing, Robinson. The Bears have 36 sacks. Um, so, obviously, Minnesota beats us in that category. We only have five interceptions. They beat us in that category. We have 11 fumbles, forced fumbles with six recoveries. So, that's good. But our D is just beat the shit um, with injuries, which we're going to talk about. So, um, just a, if we hadn't been hit with the injury bug so much this year and the COVID bug, and if Mac was still here, those sacks would be up. Because um, Quinn, in in a good world, had, was on pace to um, tie or break Richard Dent's um, sack record of 17 and a half sacks. He leads all Bears with that, Richard Dent, from... Gosh, it must have been 85, probably 85, 84, 85, 86, right around there. So I don't think Quinn's going to break it. I think he's at 14 now, but um, 13 or 14. But just the, with, with how things are going, you know, if Mac were in, it'd be a whole nother story. Um, so, and, but he's not. Uh, the Bears are dead last, number 32 at passing. Uh, you know, that's not a shock. They are good at rushing. They're seventh in the league. That's great. They're on points scored, 28 out of 32 teams. And then points allowed by their defense, they're 24th. So we beat uh, Minnesota in rushing, and we beat them in points allowed, So, but not by much. Well, um, oh, I'm sorry. Somebody's texting me. Well, the only way the Bears... Well, okay, the Bears have to run the ball. We know that. They have to run, 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 and run, and I don't know. So we're going to talk about the players. Let's talk about them first. So as of today, I am recording this or this show a little earlier today because I'm not going to be around this afternoon, so I haven't gotten the final word on what the Bears, but what I was looking at, right now they have 10 players on the COVID list. And 11 players that are either considered out or questionable for Monday night's game. And the majority of those are defense. We are so screwed. I mean, <laughs> I don't even have to say. I wish this were a Sunday game so not the whole world would see how bad we are. But, you know... All of a sudden, we've got all these players on the COVID list. Now, today is Friday. Things could change by Monday, and some of those players um, could, prove, could uh, test negative and can play. But um, I'm just not counting on it. And I was thinking, why all of a sudden all are these players on the COVID list? I don't think they give a shit anymore. I think they know the season's over, so all the precautions of not going out and not seeing people and being careful, they don't care. They're probably going out. They're like, screw it. Although, you are still being paid. And some of these players, want, you know, you should be playing because you want to make – the Bears teams next next year, or other teams. And, you know, th believe me, the Bears are watching who's playing and who's not. Uh, Jalen Johnson, one of our cornerbacks, number 33, one of the few really good players out there who's really been playing his ass off this year. He's a second-year player. Um, he, was quote, he was interviewed the other day, and basically he said, half the team's in and half the team's out. So people, you know, there's guys that are already checked out, and he is not one of them. He's like, I'm playing hard because that's what I do. I want to be on this team next year. I want to earn a paycheck, and I want us to improve. So I like that. He's a second-year player, so um, he's only going to get better. He is good. He is good. Um, obviously, we need backfield work, though, a lot of it. Eddie Jackson's good, number four. Um, but Jalen Johnson's better. Jackson is a safety and Johnson's a quarterback. So, um, you know, with all these injuries, I don't even know what's going to happen. You know, I really, really don't. I think the Bears are, um, the Bears 
are screwed because they're we've got a lot of injuries we've got a lot of COVID, and um and we have a shitty coach who and you saw um let's talk about this real quick so a couple shows ago i named some coaches that i was thinking we're going to get fired so i said naggy pete carroll of um the seattle but now they're winning, so maybe not. But I still have I still have Pete Carroll of Seattle on the watch list. Urban Meyer fired yesterday, so I knew he was gone. Didn't even make it through his first season. Mike Zimmer, who is the coach of the uh, Vikings, I say if they don't go to any playoffs, he's fired. Um, and so those are my. Um, and then we already know the Raiders fired their coach. So those are my pit- picks right now. So we'll see what happens. So yeah, I, I really kind of, and I said a couple weeks ago that I, I thought that if the Bears would fire Nagy, maybe we could see a shift. You know, all of a sudden they're not going to play. You know, go you know playoffs or anything like that. But maybe we'd see a positive shift in the locker room and on the field. And I think the longer they keep them the worse it's going to get. I think it's already at that point, quite honestly, because of all the guys on COVID. I think they've given up and they've gone out. They're going out. They don't care. They're coming in contact with people. Before, they were very, very cautious, but now they know they're not going anywhere, so what the hell? So, and especially anybody who is contracts up. They're like, yeah, I really don't give a shit. So, although other teams watch that, I'm just saying. So the Bears, I'm going to go over. We're, we're going to pretend like everyone's playing which we already know the the defense is it's just I don't know who they're putting out there I honestly don't man I don't know um so of course they they have to win the time of possession to keep Minnesota off the field because they are so good Minnesota is good on both defense and offense they I know they're only six and seven but they have lost some very close games and games they absolutely should have won. So I think they're way better than their record shows. I really do because I just read you all the stats. So they are better. Um, you know, we've got to keep them off the field. we got to run the ball a lot. Um, we got to give Justin a chance to get uh, some passes down the field. Stop doing the stupid gimmicky plays and just throw the ball and run down down the field. Quit with the side shit and the backward shit. Just throw and run straight down the damn field, Nagy. I I mean, I don't even know what to say anymore. I'm saying the same stuff week after week after week. It it is the truth, and it's getting boring for me, and I'm sure it's getting boring for you. As I said, well, last week I had a lot of viewers, but people wanted to see what I thought about the Packer game. But viewers are down, and it's because people don't care anymore about the Bears. They're pissed. And then I hear there's, well, the latest rumor, and I'm sure you all know that back there, is Ted Phillips is going to... um, uh, remove himself from football operations. He's staying with the organization, because um, I believe he's the president, And but he's going to start working on the Arlington Heights deal. And um, and then supposedly, this is supposedly, Pace is moving up to the Ted Phillips position. Therefore, then he's going to hire a new GM who hires the new coach. And so far, and so far. Okay? So, I don't know. All I know is we know that the coaches are all gone. We know that. I just wish they'd do it now, but I don't get it. Um, but whatever. It's coming. We have four more games, four more losses. At this point, the way what I'm reading and hearing, the team has given up. And that's on Nagy, too, because he says the same shit all the time. And he says, oh, our, our players are together. No one's given up. Bullshit. You know, so it is what it is. There's just not a lot to be positive for here <laughs> except for we we don't have a first round draft pick so we have a second round draft pick so we're going to be pretty high in that draft pick which will be a good thing because um we can get um hopefully a really good offensive lineman and then we got to get some um obviously backfield guys cornerbacks safeties we need a good quarterback to um compliment Jalen Johnson, number 33, like when Fuller was here, 
Yeah, they were really good back there. You know, we shouldn't have ever let him go. We should have franchise tagged him and let Robinson go. And I know people say, well, Fuller didn't, isn't having a good year with um, Denver. But that doesn't mean anything. He went to a new scheme. Even though it was Vic Vangio, it doesn't matter. New team, new scheme. If he were with the Bears, I think he would have been just as good this year. Sometimes when you change teams, one or two things happen. You get a lot better or you don't. You know, there's not usually any in between. So that's what I think happened to Fuller. I, I wished, that's what I wished, that it would have been him and Jalen Johnson back there and Robinson was gone. I think they would have got a lot more bang for their buck. But what are you going to do? So we know we got a, a lot of do, to do in the offseason besides the secondary. Then we, we got to get some wide receivers um, to help Justin out. We got... We got tight ends. We got our running team. We got a special team kickers. We're good there. We got running backs. We got our quarterback. Um, we've got one top receiver. We've got a couple good tight ends. So it's really the offensive line, the um, defensive backfield. We could use uh, some more defensive linemen and, and linebackers to back up what we got. And we do need some more linebackers because – um, Roquan is the best. We know that, 58. And Ogletree um, replaced Danny Trevason, who went down, who's no longer going to be on the team next year. And then they kind of go back and forth with the third one. Everybody plays. So I'd like to see get one or two, um, at least another solid linebacker to complement uh, Roquan Smith and have him in there all the time. Let's get back to the days when we had linebackers. Remember those days? So, a lot of work in the off season. They have an awful lot to do, and I'm sure they're very busy getting ready. Let's hope because this year you can start um, interviewing coaches while the playoffs are going on. It's a new rule this year because you usually had to wait till after the season if you wanted to uh, interview a um, coach that was on a playoff team. You can now do it, but I don't know if they're going to go after anybody like that. I've, I've heard so many names, and you know you can't believe any of it until it actually happens, so I'm just going to wait. So uh, what else can I say? I, the Bears are going to lose. I mean, and it sucks that it's on Monday Night Football because it's embarrassing. But I'll be watching, and then I'll do the show on Tuesday, and you know there won't be a victory song, but maybe they will finally fire them. Doubt it, but anyway. So, and I do apologize for pre repeating the same stuff the last couple of weeks, but there's really nothing, especially this week with half the team being on injured reserve. Again, things could change. This is Friday morning in Vegas right now, um, and um, Monday night things could change. So hold on, and I have my Hicks jersey on, hoping he will play. Haven't heard he was questionable in the beginning of the week, so I don't know. I really love to see him play because we know he's probably gone too. I would love the Bears to sign him, but that's probably going to be up to Hicks. He wants to retire a Bear. Just w depends what kind of a pay cut he's willing to take. All right. So I hope you guys are having a good holiday season. I hope everybody's getting ready. I'm totally ready. Um, my, my gifts are wrapped. Most of them, I got my sons and his wife's under the tree. Um, the families have all been mailed out. And um, I'm ready. Uh, so that's it. I just hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, there's football on Saturday and Sunday t this week. Um, national football, and then during the week, there's a lot of college bowl games on. A lot of good ones coming up. I'm really excited about that. Um, looking forward to that. So, I really hope everybody continues to have a good holiday season. Be kind to people. Remember, I, I love that. Be kind. Help somebody out. Smile at people if they can see it under the masks, and um, stay healthy. Be happy and love one another. All right, and um, let's maybe maybe there'll be a miracle on Monday, but doubt it. <laughs> really doubt it because you know what, the Bears are bad. <laughs> I just can't wait till Nagy gets fired. That's all. You know what? Just please. And our misery. And my misery. I've been wanting him fired since 2019. So you can imagine how pissed off I am. So, oh well. 
I love you guys. I love all my watchers, all my regular supporters. Keep keep watching. And, um, you know, we'll just keep talking each week, and then we'll be done. And then it'll be talking about, uh, after the fourth game, the next four games, then we'll be talking about 2022, how things have to get better. And we'll be talking about our new coach. All right, I love you guys. I really do. I love the support, and I do really, really appreciate it. It really, really means a lot to me. All right, and as always, keep on rocking and rolling from Vegas, baby, and I'll see you on Tuesday. Oh, boy.